What's up, everybody? This is episode three of Changing of the Hip Hop Guards. I'm journalist Sincere, and that's my partner, Uncle E, and we have assembled uh, a host of uh, gentlemen who um, go way back uh, to Long Beach area. Uh, we're going to be talking about the um, memories of doom on this episode. Uh, we're coming up on a, a one-year anniversary since uh, he has left us, but he has uh, definitely touched us all, and we are going to uh, all exchange some memories and uh, talk about the street naming as well. Um, if you guys want to introduce yourself so we get a better context of uh, who we're talking to. All right, Peace. Patrick Graham. No doubt, I go by Driss. Well, let's say that right. Dr. Patrick Graham. Come on, man. That, that, Doc, Dr. Pat. You didn't do all that hard work to not have those two letters not mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. That's for some folks, but that's for you all, it's still Pat. I got you. <laughs> now, listen, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, Sincere's going to probably do most of handling the uh, questions and everything. I kind of want to be a part of you guys today instead of just the host. Um, but I will be asking some questions. So, you know, sincere, take it off and let's see. Uh, hopefully these other brothers will join us as well. No doubt. Let's start with Patrick. Uh, talk about a little bit about being uh, from Long Beach. Uh, what you've seen in the early days uh, growing up in Long Beach. You know, so Long Beach, what um, people don't know particularly about black and brown communities there is that the majority of them were migrants from somewhere else. So... Um, the community that's known as North Park, where Doom came from, um, in terms of his, his stay here, is um, one that actually formed through the great migration of many African Americans from the South. And then you had people from the Caribbean and other places also come and created was the North Park community, which is really translate into a community of color, basically, right? And what's interesting about it is that because you had so many people from the Caribbean with Southern roots that came there, they brought with them a different culture. Um, they brought with them music, a music just like you would find in the Harlem Renaissance or anywhere else. And so they influenced a lot of the culture. And if you think about even the early days of hip hop, um, you saw that there was a large influence from cats from Long Island is because of where their actual roots were from. Mm. And so Long Beach was one of those places where um, as early as the late 70s, you also, just like you found in the founding places like the Bronx, could find block parties, DJs. Um, we were just talking before we came on air about, you know, how I had my cousin and, and his boy supposed to be watching me sometimes while my mom was at work and then they would take me off to these parties where they were DJing out on, on the block, either up down Hudson, uh, sometimes on Market Street. Um, so it was kind of cool as you're watching all that evolve. But you don't really understand the full impact of it all until you're actually older when you're able to look back on it and you begin to put some pieces together. And you begin to understand, you know, what that community is about. So it's one of the reasons why I'm very proud of Long Beach. One of the reasons why Drez, once he called on uh, me to get involved with him um, in the KMDMF Doom Way Project, um, it was easy for me. Um, it's a place that I love, but it's also one that I, rep you know, realized actually influenced me a lot um, as someone who's born and raised there. Um, through hip hop. And, you know, I still consider myself coming out of that generation as a hip hop intellectual. Mm. Nice. What about you, Driz? Yeah, so I grew up in Long Beach as well. Um, you know, and I, I definitely was influenced by hip hop heavy. Like, it was all in my house growing up. Um, like, I always say, like, I, there was a bunch of us in the house. So, my mother had nine kids, so like with the boys, we all packed in one room. So, you know, I was growing up watching them do their freestyles and their graffiti and all that. So I, I grew right into it. Right. Um, you know, in Sub and Doom, they was close to my brothers, so they they come around a lot. They, you know, the whole family is close to my family. Um, my mother, a Jehovah Witness, so she went to the Kingdom Hall with his aunts. 
stuff like that. So we all was pretty close. And um, yeah, like Pat was saying, I, went, I, I lived on um, Fulton Street and I remember there was, you know, there's a park at the corner and they used to do like a lot of parties in that park, live DJs, jam packs. So I used to see everybody come through there, you know? Um, you know, I'm, I'm younger than doing, you know, sub, of course, but, um, you know, they was real close to my family. I grew up around them. We had a great relationship. You know, Doom started putting me under the wing when I was getting older, you know, and inspired me to get better with my music. And when he passed, it hit me like bricks. You know, I, I can not believe it. You know, like doing one of them people, it's, it's hard to keep up with them. But we spoke a few times before he passed. And when, it, when, when, when I found out, I was just like, you know, and I, I just wanted to find a way to get closure for me as well and get my flowers, you know what I mean? Because I feel like, you know, a lot of people didn't realize, like, you know, Doom blew up and he left that community kind of early. And a lot of people didn't realize, you know, how much of an impact he had on like, you know, like people like me and, you know, the history. So I, I just wanted to make sure everybody know, you know, and, and inspire other people as well. Like we got, we got to make this happen for Doom. So um, I reached out to Pat, Dr. Pat, that's the man, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, <laughs> it, it was it was a thought, but I, I know that's one guy that could that can make it happen, you know, and from there, we had a conversation and, you know what I mean? I got to support and he took it from there, you know, and I appreciate everything he did, definitely. Right. About yourself, Uncle E? Man, I, where to start at, man? Um, first of all, when, well, okay, let's keep it. When Doom passed away, like Driz was just saying, it was a shock to a lot of us. Um, obviously, I remember, you know, we all found out December 31st. He passed away October 31st. Uh, right. You know, I go on Instagram. First thing I see is a post from uh, uh, Young Guru mm. saying that, you know, MF Doom passed away. I thought, I'm like, what's going on? My first thought is we all know Doom, you know, with the, with the mystery behind Doom and everything. I thought it was some kind of, you know, what is this, an album that's getting ready to come out? You know, something that they were kind of joking. Right. Not, not joking, but I, I thought there was something else to it, that it wasn't that he really passed away. Started making phone calls to the fellas and, you know, found out it was true. And one of the first things uh, that came up was that Buzz was telling me that Driz had this idea, you know, of, of renaming the street. And, you know, it was perfect. It was, it was... You know, yeah, we would all have loved that something like that could happen when they could see it, right? But like we've discussed afterwards, the impact that having that name, that street changed to that name for the young ones coming up in Long Beach to be able to see that. And some that might not even know or realize that right there in 114, right next door to them, there was a, a you know, this huge talent that came out of there. I think it would make an impact. I think it would give kids inspiration you know some motivation um they can feel proud you know which i'm sure they already do of long beach but you know again you watch things on tv and you see everything on tv all the time or on videos of other places of other towns that have you know somebody or someone or groups that come out of there that you know they feel proud of and want to root and this is one of them uh you know doom on his own you know, we could talk about KMD, but Doom on his own afterwards, as far as MF Doom, you know, forget it, man. That mask is, is, you know, a lot of people talk about the W for the Wu-Tang being worldwide. Well, <laughs> Doom's mask is right there with it. Uh, right. So I was super proud of Driz. I was super thankful for Patrick because, yes, we are like the Get Joe's Posse and the crew and the friends and family and brothers. And these are also our brothers. You know, we looked up to Pat growing up and uh, Driz was always there around us from, from day one. So to see these brothers kind of take that lead to make something happen for our brother. I mean, you know, their brother as well, but I'm just saying, you know, I, it brought tears to my eyes. I won't even lie. I, I, it was, I was, it was one of the best things that could happen. We all thought that we would have a chance to sit down with Doom one more time and, and kind of build again. You know, like Driz said earlier, he was a guy that moved away from Long Beach at an early stage. 
was all over the place, made friends and family and other, you know, you got the CM crew. Uh, then he was out in LA, he's in the UK, he's everywhere. So there's a chapter of his life in all these different areas. But, you know, we hold on very dearly to our chapter. You know, we, we were in that house in 114 for a very long time, joking around, playing around, you know, watching them work, putting together the first album. I was in school with Sub Rock, you know, summer school together. He was playing me songs that were going to be on the first album, you know, that we would get mad because they would play us a version that was crazy. And then they changed it up for the album, which it still was dope, but it wasn't that what we heard. You know, we, right. was, we would go back like, why'd you change it? But, um, but you know, yeah, I want, let, let, you know, I'd rather let these brothers tell some more stories. Uh, but I just want to put, you know, a little bit more perspective to everything and, and what they meant to us. So while I got both of you here, thank you very much, man, because I haven't had the chance to tell you guys face to face. But um, from all of us, man, we, we we really appreciate what you guys did. It means a lot. No doubt. Uh, Driss, can you talk a little bit about that uh, process of getting the name uh, uh, going uh, the, uh, to change the name of the street? Well, like, like I said before, um, you know, that 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 was something that I wasn't really too familiar with. You know, but I, I knew that's what Dr. Pat does, you know, and, you know, I, I reached out to him and he, you know, he held it down and, you know, walked us through it. And, you know, we all played that part, you know, you know, he gave out the task, what we need to do. And, and we made it happen, you know. Right. Patrick, can you talk a little bit about when you got that phone call uh, and uh, the necessary steps that uh, it took to make this happen? Well, you know, I think the first thing was that, you know, in talking to Drez, I'll be honest, I get asked to do a lot of stuff. And, um, but in talking to him, I could tell that he was sincere, that he really wanted to see this through. And um, when I feel like somebody's that sincere, um, then I'm ready to, to just roll with you. There's no cost, there's nothing. Just let's make this happen. Because um, I felt like, as he told me about his vision, but also as I began to think about the impact of doom and then remembered the shy young man that I remember um, and started thinking about also his connection, even interracially, you know, the way you skateboard, other things, right? Bringing people together, I said, you know, there's another story here. When you think about hip hop, what is really hip hop, real hip hop, but ways of telling stories, right? Ways of documenting some things, um, whether serious, joking, braggadocio, doesn't matter. It's really about the story. So as I was talking to Driz, um, and he started sharing about his experience, I began to think about that this was not gonna be just about a petition, but there had to be a story around it. There had to be a, a way to sell Doom beyond a record, mm -hmm. right? Or beyond a recording artist. Mm -hmm. And so um, after that, um, we wrote up the petition and we wrote the petition like you would write a story. Mm -hmm. And it galvanized, and within, what is it, Driz, about three weeks, we were close to 9,000 plus? Yeah, yeah, once it, it got out, we were supposed to do like a soft launch, but it, it went through the roof quick. We did a soft yeah. launch, and it ended up being the launch. Yeah, yeah. And, yep. um, you know, the next thing you know, we had a lot of hip-hop publications covering it. Full press on, sent the letter, which was basically... <clears throat> The letter was just almost like the petition to city council. Um, and you know, you're during pandemic, so it moves a little slower. Um, but as we started making more and more contact, we started making some headway. Um, and by the time the spring hit, things accelerated quickly. So we were able to get um, the council to look at it. Um, some of them reviewing who Doom was, right? <laughs> um, and uh, even one saying, you know, they thought one thing of them said, oh, I don't want to, you know, celebrate any rappers or hip hop artists. 
And then after reading up on him and reading what we wrote about him, um, it sort of changed even how he thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's interesting, you know, again, as we was talking earlier, my master's thesis was, was on hip hop and it was based on the imagery that we portray in media. And, he, and this uh, city council person was much like those people who viewed it through a lens so distant um, and so based off of, of stereotype and in some ways, some racist thought that, um, you know, it took him to really look at his life and see that he's an opportunity for Long Beach. That goes to show anyway, you. Yeah, that, goes to, old. that goes to show you the impact that, that Doom had, you know, right? Because if his life leading up to his death, um, if he didn't make the accomplishments that he did and stuff like that, like, you know, we unfortunately we do have artists that come out that, that you know, that's it. They're just an artist. They came out. You don't, you know, there's really not too much to their backstory. But, right. um, you know, Doom and the family and, as a whole, this story is amazing. You know what I mean? They, 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 because aside from Doom, they, they just come from a line of very intelligent, intellectual people. Uh, right. You know, so it was funny because if you go on YouTube, uh, Sincere, you can find there's a there's a video posted of City Hall when they were going over the, the uh, proposition. And there was one gentleman that was on there. I think it's probably the one you're talking about, Pat, who said, I have never heard of Doom. And then he's like, you know, to hear him yeah. like saying the names and stuff, like it's hilarious, man. But but I even shed a tear watching that, to be honest with you, because I would have, I would have listen, when you guys came up with the idea of the street naming, being from Long Beach and knowing how it can be. I was like, man, this is not gonna. I, I I couldn't see it happen. I couldn't see them saying and agreeing to it. So the fact that I could see a town meeting and and this guy up there mentioning Doom and talking about it, I never heard this song. I shed a tear because I, I it was, you know. So again, man, I just applaud the hell out of you guys. <laughs> you know, and shout out to Deke, shout out to Quest because I know that I think they went up there as well to the city council meeting. Um, yeah, man, yeah, so that was cool. So, Pat, did you have any other, uh, tell us a little bit about what you remember as far as Doom and Sub Rock a little early on. So, you know, I never knew them as Doom and Sub Rock. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just, <laughs> them as Doomalay. <laughs> um, and what was interesting is, um, as young men, you know, they were really, in some ways very shy of themselves at times, you know, because Long Beach, you know, we had a, a host of characters, you know, who were who were there, who played the dozens, who who snapped on you when you came through. So at times, you know, I, I saw Doom uh, and others sometimes be victims of that. Kids can be brutal, right? And um, so I know that oftentimes he was shy about certain things, but what I think is um, interesting about that is that I saw Doom, Zev Love at the time um, in Charlotte at the Coliseum. They were performing uh, with third bass at a um, concert. And so I began to talk with them. And I mean, I'm so proud that they're there on a stage. And they're just happy, they're proud to see me in this, this environment at the time I'm in college. And, um, and it's something that I mentioned at the ceremony that, you know, when he talked to me, he said, you know, the one thing that I remember is that you was always cool. That you just, you talked to us like we were men. <laughs> and, um, and he said, you know, I didn't even really know why, you just did. And um, basically that what he was saying was, you know, people sometimes at the base level, we just want people to be kind, right? Right. You know, you know, with everything that's going on in the world and you got this neighborhood and we all up against something. We got common, common enemies out there as, as youth, particularly youth of color. And so, 
um, when he said that to me, it stuck with me because um, I remember it because you never know how you're touching someone, right? Mm -hmm. Until you get a moment like that. And um, basically what he was saying to me was, you didn't do to me what some of those cats that you hung around did. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's really what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I could second that though, because you've always been, you've been the same since day one. You were always a cool brother, man. You know, we always looked at you as our older brother, even, you know, no matter what interaction. It could have, you know, it, exactly what Pat's just said, right? There was so many different characters. So when you saw Pat, though, you 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 disrespected him as a gentleman, as a, as a cool individual. And um, and like you said, you, you never know who's watching, man. You never know. And, and, and just your, the way you carried yourself, just that alone, was impactful a lot, even for you know, for us that used to hang out on the corners just drinking and snapping all the time. When Pat came around, it was like, How you doing? <laughs> you know? Right. So yeah, yeah, I could see that I could see them uh saying that. And you're right too, because that's they Doom, probably more so than sub, was a little bit more uh shy, you know. Even though he he had fun and he was out there, but he was a little bit more reserved than sub was. And um, yeah, and, and and you know, sometimes when when you have kids like them that were <coughs> into so many different things, um, like you said, they become victims sometimes because others don't understand it. They don't understand the creativity. They don't understand the, what's going on, and they get teased on and stuff like that. And they had to, they had a lot of battles to fight as well. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Those that slept on them and thought that oh these guys are like nerds or something or whatever, they had another thing coming to them, <laughs> you know. But um, Drew, what about you, man? What, what, what stories you got? Um, well, I wanted to say um, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the family first. Uh, you know, you know this one that happened without them as well. Um, you know, it was it was a hard time because they was going through a lot. You know, we were kind of like moving fast on the whole situation, you know, because we also understood, you know, the climate of things and how it works with politics. So that that was just a hard hurdle to get over as well. And I just wanted to shout them out and say thank you to all of them for definitely um, giving their support, you know, with the whole situation. You're but, not um, kidding about the politics, Chris. Huh? So you're not kidding about the politics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of get it. Like, like we were saying earlier, everybody wasn't familiar with doing music, you know? Um, some people come from different walks of life and really don't know what's going on. And the way you wrote everything up, you know, it made it so much easier, you know what I mean? For a person that don't even know Doom or anything about him to understand what he means to everyone, you know? So that, that was a beautiful thing right there. And, um, you know, like, like I said before, like Doom, Doom inspired me a lot. Um, uh, one of the last times that I really spent with him, because we had talked here and there, but like when I was young, um, I remember one time I was like in trouble and, uh, you know, Doom was coming to pick me up and we was going out, we went out a few times and he wanted me to come down to Atlanta with him and uh, work on some music. But uh, I, I was going through so much that, I really didn't think about going at all. I kind of regret that, you know, but um, once I seen what he went down and did, I was like, yo, I got to take this serious. And from there, that really pushed me in the right direction to start taking things more serious. And he, and he inspired me to, um, cause we used to talk about like London and stuff like that. And he was one of the reasons why I always wanted to go there and perform. Um, and I did it, like I went out there my first trip, I didn't know one person out there. I just went and did a showcase. And then after that, I got booked a few more times to come back out there and perform. So, you know, those are the type of things, you know, Doom inspired me to do, you know. Nice. Um, going back to the street name, and uh, then I'll let you get a sincere. Uh, Correct. How hard or was it difficult to come up with the actual name that was going to be on the sign? Like, was there a toss between just MF Doomway or... You know, how, what was how was what was the process of that? Whichever one. <laughs> you, want, you want to speak on that, Pat? Yeah. So 
Yeah, it, it went back and forth for a minute. Um, you originally had um, sort of MF Doom and um, you had MF Doom and um, we were trying to uh, also be inclusive of, you know, his <coughs> legacy with KMD as well as Sub Rock. And so I think that there was a lot of toss back and forth. Um, you know, we got every suggestions for everything from Dumale Way <laughs> to who, you know, just MF Doom, Doom Way. And I think that there was a lot of, of debate um, back and forth. And we also were trying to be conscious of the family. And so trying to get their input um, into what it would be. And eventually, I think that with them and all of us, we came on one accord. What's interesting about it is, you know, Driz has a lot of, you know, emotional and intellectual investment in this. For me, at the time, I just viewed myself as a convener. So I'm almost like a sort of you know, just a conduit. I'm trying to get these different perspectives and then lay them out the way that I hear them, right? Because the vision is really his and some of the family as well as, as a lot of the, the brothers who served on, on the committee. Man, shout um, out to the committee. Yeah. So, you know, I think that um, what I found interesting is that when you're in the middle, you sort of start to get a lot more of what this is really about. Even with the struggles with the name, there were stories behind why this name as opposed to another name. And then of course, we also had the public. I remember reading several uh, comments from when we did the petition. People had all kinds of ideas um, of what they wanted it to look like too. And I, I thought that was fair because these are people who also supported Doom um, as an artist. They were not just his fans, but these were people who believed in, in his message, right? So and we, we finally got there. Hmm. Okay. So KMD, MF, Doomway, and um, who were some of the people on the committee? I mean, yeah, of course, Lou. <laughs> Go ahead. You know what I mean? Shout out to Onyx. Shout out to Q. You know, we, 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 we all held it down. You know, it's a beautiful thing. James you know, Hodge. James, James Hodge. They, yeah, there they, they, they was even people that... um wasn't so much attached to the committee originally that even got involved. Like it, it became a community thing to get it done. Nice, which was nice. Right. And yeah. it's just Tangy came on board a couple of meetings there. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. last couple of yeah. meetings yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. Um, I'm sorry to cut you off. Now, I was just thinking about um, because they didn't want us to put the announcement out until like what was that like a, like a few days before about a because, week before yeah right yeah you know they wanted to keep it more intimate because they didn't want to draw a big crowd you know but we still had a good turnout so yeah you know good. like Uncle e, when you thought right that we had just announced it that we made the decision it was actually made a few weeks before or actually a month at that point but mm -hmm. um, the city had a fear of having so many people that they couldn't control crowd or volume. Okay. Um, and that's really why we had it. But you know, I want to still say something too. The Assistant City Manager, and I didn't get to thank him, I always, um, and I still got to write a letter to him, uh, Assistant City Manager McNally mm -hmm. um, did a lot of organizing of his troop behind to get that sign, to get the podium and other things there. And um, so I, I want to, you know, acknowledge him too, because um, at the end of the day, once the decision was made, he was fully on board. Oh, nice, nice. No doubt. Um, I always thought the guys were, uh, you know, ahead of their time. Do you guys remember at what point they started studying Islam? 
Uh, well, I mean, if you, I, I'll see if I can remember more or less. Onyx was studying Islam early on. Um, I know that for a fact. I know before he even became a part of KMD, Onyx was already studying Islam. Doom and Sub Rock, I don't remember like as far as the timeline exactly at what point, but I know even like in his family, you know, like his mother, uh, you know, believed in that Islamic faith. So, it, you know, it, it kind of came along with the family already. But as far as when they fully like took on and, and were studying, and I'm not sure what time that happened exactly, but I know already by, what was it like by 87, 88, between 87 and 89, I mean, they were full fledged going, you know, traveling to Brooklyn, going to the mosque, taking their shahada. Um, you know, they were, they knew uh, they would go upstate even, you know, and stay with, like, they were full fledged into it. I'm talking about right. there was a community in Lakeview, you know, where a lot of the Ansar Muslims actually went to live. And they were, Brothers from you know Lakeview, Long Beach, different parts of Long Island that went to this one spot to live, and you know they were out there going out there selling books and 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 doing the whole the whole nine. So, like I said, Alex was early early with it, and um, like I said, as far as me being witnessing and seeing it, between eighty seven eighty nine, I know they were full fledged with it, and we used to have actually meet. Um, so before Onyx got into the group, there was another brother by the name of Harun, right? Aaron, who was part of KMD. So he eventually, you know, leaves the group for, you know, for his own reasons and Doom and Sub bring on Onyx. So the combination of those three with the Islam, the studying, the teachings, even though we were kind of right there in age, we always looked at them sort of as our brig brothers because of the knowledge that they had. So they were learning themselves and bringing all of that teaching back to us. There used to be an EOC on top of, um, on Park Avenue and we would hold meetings there and they would come, you know, we would have actually big me. There was brothers from Lakeview, Rockville Center, that would trip, you know, come all the way out to Long Beach to join us for these meetings. So we, we would have like 30, 40 brothers and sisters up in the EOC, you know, and learning, you know, a lot of us, it was the first time even knowing anything about knowledge itself. Um, you know, if you remember in the early eighties, throughout the nineties, the Fiker centers and, and, and SARS, it was, it was everywhere. Right. So, that was um, that was pretty much what was happening at that time for us. You know, we were we were learning. We would fast together, break bread together. Um, you know, we had it was a lot of things. We even <laughs> so they used to have these flags, right? The Ansar flags, <laughs> and a lot of us would have the flag on. Doom sub and Onyx. What they would do is if they randomly caught one of us walking by, hey, what's up, what's happening? We would talk, they would hit us with a question. <laughs> and if we didn't know the answer on the spot, whoop, they would snap, snatch our flags right off until we went back, learned it, and, and maybe try to get our flag back. But um, that's what it was, man. That's, that's, that's pretty much how, you know, it was such a toss up between hanging out, the music, having fun, but also the learning part of it. And that's another reason why we always look at them the way we do and hold them to such a high regard because they, they, you know, to this day, there's so much that I learned from them from those meetings and teachings that I carry in my life today. So that's, that's go. pretty much my answer. <laughs> Long answer. Yeah. Uh, for Patrick, uh, without a doubt, uh, I think Gas Face was the moment where uh, that was the big breakthrough for Zeb Love X. Uh, what did that moment mean for you and uh, the city of Long Beach as well? Well, I mean, I mean, it meant a lot to me because I'm actually watching it at the time from Charlotte, North Carolina. 
because um, by that point, I'm actually at Johnson C. Smith University. And um, so as I'm watching it, um, and I can't remember if it was on Ralph Daniels show, or if it was on MTV, I believe it was MTV at Yo MTV Raps at the time. Um, I just remember pointing out saying, these cats are from my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know, I was pointing to them. And you know, at the time, even some of the crew with third base, I mean, you talk about some of the dancers, they was from Long Beach, you know, you talk about Otis Ahmed, um, Search, and, and they used to come with us to uh, Club Z's when we were like 13, 14, <laughs> if y'all remember that, across the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was um, one where you're just rooting and you have a pride in where you come from because you don't look, just look at them as a representation of who they are as individuals, but that they represent in, you know, Long Beach itself um, in many ways. So I'm going to tell you, it was, you know, when I found out his role in production, well, you know, then that took it into another level for me because this is not just a guest appearance. This right. is a mastermind behind it. How about you, Driz? Um, I remember, it was crazy. I remember one time the video came on you know, because video music box is always on in our house. That was, that was the only channel. Um, I remember one time th- he was actually doing was in a room when it came on, which was crazy. Uh, mm. you know, it's kind of awkward too. <laughs> we all just looking, <laughs> smiling and watching it. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, that was dope. You know, like what was crazy, like I said, back then I was young. So I was more observing and you really don't realize how, how big, you know, I didn't realize how big Doom was at that, at that moment, you know, it was more like I was seeing all the time. And um, until later on, it really started to grow on, you know, but I do remember it coming on video music box and Doom walked in with my brother. We always just hanging out watching it. That was crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Dope. Uh, how did life change? I mean, did you witness how life changed after that video uh, got constant rotation with the guys? Uh, what was their uh, frame of mind? And uh, what were the conversations like uh, about going into their debut album? Well, I, I can't I can't really answer that. I was the young buck, you know? I was the young buck. Like, like back during that time, only, only time I really would see like doing a sub is like they come around the house you know, in the neighborhood, stuff like that, or if I'm at the aunt house, because um, his aunt used to babysit us. But, um, you know, like later on, when I really started coming out, that's when I, you know, um, I think Sub passed by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, but um, I really started coming out. That's when we started really having like real close personal conversations, things like that. Right. I mean, for, for, for us, when, when Gas Face came out, right? That was that was that was kind of it for us. Like when Gas Face came out and Doom made that appearance on there, and we saw the video, and you see Sub Rock in there, and the fellas, some of the fellas. Um, that that was that that was like the I think our our real celebration. But when their album came out, that was cool and we were excited about it and um, but there was also a feel see when you're friends with somebody like that and you're at their house every day day night on the porch in the room you know you you're happy you're excited you know and all of that but at the same time it's like yeah, that's my man. Like, you, you know what I mean? If that makes sense, you don't realize it's like after. You yeah, know, right. you go to a show, you see them performing, you're just, you're excited. We were happy as hell to go to shows. You know, like I never forget when we went, when they had to perform at Kilimanjaro in the city. I don't, I don't want to say if that was the first time, but it was one of the, you know, it was them, Brand Nubians, um, I believe Pete Rock and Seal Smooth, if I'm not mistaken. And man, we all trekked to the city. I remember getting online to get inside and (laughs) Guru from Gangstar was at the door, right? And the bouncer was giving him a hard time to to get into the club. And I remember me and uh, Mr. Hood, who hopefully will join us. 
me, him, and a couple of other brothers, we're looking at it. We're watching them give Guru a hard time. And we're like, we're not getting it. If they're not, if they're not letting him in, we're not getting in this club. And I, as soon as we said that, somebody opens up the side door to the club. And we jumped right through the side, man. We went, we jumped through the side of the door, went inside, blended in with the crowd real quick. You know, like some of us had hats on, we took it off or whatever, and everybody just scattered for a second, right? So <laughs> we could blend in and we got to experience that. So like there were moments like that that we would get excited about, happy for them. But again, it's not till later that when you look back and, you know, you're not realizing in the moment what the impact is. You're just having fun and enjoying it. Like, yo, those are my brothers. Why wow, listen to them on the radio? Why wow, look at the video? And, you know, that, that that's pretty much, I mean, not, you know, at least from most of our perspective, that's how that was. Um, but it was great. It was, it was amazing. And the other cool thing about it too is that being that they were on Electra for their first album, they were there with Brand Nubian, leaders of the new school, you know, leaders of the new school right in Uniondale. So sometimes we would hear, you know, like I remember uh, Brand Nubian's first album, we heard it before it came out. You know what I mean? And we were excited about that. Um, hearing Pooba and leaders of the new school on some of their songs, you know, we're fans of these guys and all of a sudden it's like, wow, they got a song with them. You, you know, so we, we, we were just like enjoying the moment, man. We were, it was, it was just fun times. It was fun times and to get to see the hard work that that they put in, you know, start to kind of take off and evolve. You know, Sub Rock used to cut hair for records sometimes. Sometimes he didn't even want the money. He was like, if you have any records, you know, I'll give you a nice fresh cut, take the records, and they would start digging, um, you know, just to get some money, just to buy a piece of equipment, you know. So it, it was it was fun times. It was fun times to watch. And another thing, people, they, they was real yeah. humble. They were very humble too. Like so, like you know, like some people growing up around artists from their neighborhood, they see like a big transition where, you know, their personality, attitude might switch up. They get a little flashy and things like that. Like it right. was down. Or I I never seen them change up. They was always down to earth. Always the same. You know. Right. Very dope. Uh. Patrick, did you have uh, any interaction with the guys during the recording of Mr. Hood? Um, no, not as much. Only when I came home, you know, I would see them occasionally um, just walking through the street, locking we talk. Um, but, you know, by that point, I'm away. Right. You know, I'm, I'm 600 miles away. And um, so a lot of the interaction is very fleeting. What's interesting though is, you know, if you're a college kid at that time coming home, it's not that many of us that make it, right? Um, at that time. Um, not that, it, that we didn't, we had a good amount, but still, you know, percentage wise, when you thought about it, because um, it was still, you know, tough. I mean, it's not like, you know, Long Beach, you know, bred people to, you know, move in certain directions. As a matter of fact, my guidance counselor told me I wasn't college material, right? Really? So, you know, I had to, you know, overcome that, right? So, um, but a lot of times when I did see him, um, it was more this thing of, of respect. You know, we would talk. It was almost like I was treated like a, a bigger brother, I guess, in a sense, um, even though I'm not that much older. <laughs> it's only like a year. <laughs> I think there was somehow they had this image that I was old, much older than I was. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a little I, bit older. Yeah, you know, we could edit this, whatever. But how old are you, Pat? Man, I'm just fifty years old, man. I'm oh, see, that's what. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm for, I'm forty eight. You know what I mean? But right. it's exactly what you said just now. For whatever reason, you just seem you like our big brother, man. <laughs> I had that glow, man. You got the glow. Yeah, that's what so it, it was kind of weird. Yeah, I'm talking to him sometime, and then I could tell by the way that 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 you all get yours even do yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he would talk to me, and I'm and in the back of my mind, I am wondering. I'm like, you do know. 
<laughs> it's almost like we want to say, hey, how you doing, sir? Yeah, yeah, man, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of weird, right? <laughs> and um, yeah. so it's how the conversation, but you know, I think that um, in coming back and forth and seeing that, I think there was a lot of pride too for me, um, not just because they're from Long Beach, but uh, had already begun to see the evolution of hip hop in many ways. I mean, I'm 15 or 16 years old, and I see Boogie Down Productions' first performance in Latin Quarters. Mm. Um, I could tell you what I had on. Really? I had on a corduroy <laughs> Nike hat, slightly tilted to the side, plaid ID shirt. You remember the ID shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had those on, acid wash Levi's, tapered tight to the ankle, because we used to sew them to the ankle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight legs. And some white <laughs> valley sneakers with a little gray B on. Can wow. I can I ask can I ask you a question? Did Karras <laughs> one did Karras one have on the windbreaker and um the same <laughs> the same hat he, he wears to this day? They uh, did. They had it tilted the side. You know, he had a cap on baseball cap. It was like like, like a leather cap like me. But I remember. <laughs> yeah, me me and um me and Cecilia have you know we've been joking back and forth with KRS because he has like this knitted hat. That he's been wearing for probably the last 25 years. Yeah, he wasn't wearing that yet. No, I know back then I think he wasn't, <laughs> but uh <laughs> that's why he was asking there. Like we lost Driz, but uh yeah, that's cool. That's he, cool. He, he was still he was still criminal minded at still... that time. He, he wasn't <laughs> the my philosophy dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, oh man. Yeah, but so it's interesting. So understanding that being able to to see certain things evolve, you know. Um you know, even the center, the MLK Center, you know, they used to have some hip hop concerts there. I remember yeah. sometimes them getting shot up too and having to run and duck up out of that joint. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a lot of famous um, cats that went there. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, I mean, so we had our moments, but you, you got to actually see it. And you know what? The other thing is, we're not that far. We're a borderline cat town of Queens. Right. Right. So if you really look at Long Beach and even the way it's designed, it actually looks like a cross between Long Island and Queens, the way right. it's even developed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just say that, you know, watching them, seeing them, um, of course, when they make their, you know, as Onyx and others make their metamorphosis too, to, to Islam, you know, um, and talking with them about even that early on, you know, as I was seeing when I would come back home, you know, you got to understand, I used to get my hair cut by their father, yeah, uh, Honest's right. father, who was a Southern preacher, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, right? Who used to cut my hair since I was like maybe six, seven years old. Um, and so seeing that metaphor, of course, that for me was okay. You know, I would ask them questions that probably most people would, wouldn't. I want to know, well, what's the family? What does your father think? How does, you know, how does that work? You know, I was like one of those type. I want to know more about those things because I was in the culture itself. Mm. Yeah, shout out to um, Onyx Pops, man, and moms and, they, and, you know, the whole family. They had that barbershop in Lakeview. And how funny is it that, they, you know, like your Actually, brother, like, your brother ends up cutting hair there at one point, right? Yeah. Edwin, shout out to That's Edwin. Right. And um, even Onyx's brother, uh, uh, Phil, you know, mm -hmm. he ends up cutting, you know, so shout out to them, man. Shout out to the whole family. Um, what were you saying, Drew? I'm, I'm sorry, even if I got, after I started cutting my hair bald, this is like about 95 now, much later, I'm already out of college. Um, I would still stop in those places just to sit there and um, just laugh. Because, you know, barbershops at that time, you know, that was our social club, really. Right. I mean, that's where we went in. You know, now, you know, you got appointments and all that stuff. You know, cats come in and out fast. But back then, it was like all full day experience. Oh, yeah. Um, and even Rev had a lot of um, KMDs at the time. He had their stuff up. Yeah. He had, you know, their flyers up. He had their albums up. So there was a full embracing of of KMD um, at that time, even in in that barbershop. So you, know, you had this constant reminder. 
so sincere, just so you know that the in the video Who Me, mm -hmm. if, you, if you go back and watch it, those scenes of the barbershop. Okay. That's the barbershop that we're talking about. That was Alex's father's barbershop. And um, so those scenes in that video, that's the barbershop. And the same the when I was talking about how the brothers used to move had moved to Lakeview, it was a like an room an apartment that was like kind of right above right above yeah where the uh barbershop was so you had like all these ansar muslims upstairs living all you know packed up up there you had the barbershop you're talking about like a culture <laughs> a clash of culture man it was right there but man it was it, it, i'm telling you it was it was the best times you know you had this group called cracker jacks that come from lakeview they would be there you know, Fife, I remember at the video shoot, Fife was there, you know, and it was just like a normal thing, man. It was just, it was the good times, man. I, I don't think there'll ever be something like the 80s and 90s again, in my opinion. Hey, e, you know, I was I was thinking about um, when we were uh, speaking <laughs> earlier on the Gas Face video, Emus, man. Emus. Yeah. Emus, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the best Gas Face. He had the best. Yeah, it's crazy, right? He, he actually managed me at one point. Emus was, you know, I haven't seen him in years. Yeah. But he was, um, he was an intricate piece, man. He was, he was, no doubt. he was a good brother, uh, mm -hmm. funny, you know, and and <laughs> we had a lot of laughs on behalf of that kid, man. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, shout out to Emus, man. <laughs> well, Emus had to be funny. <laughs> Yeah, he was. I mean, because you know, Emus was the victim of a lot of dozens. <laughs> he had to develop some tough skin to be able to come back at you. If you, yeah. you know, yeah, and I watched that. And, and while Emus has never been a victim of mine, uh, um, I I did sort of watch some slaying going on, yeah, and um, yeah. and then I, I like the fact that he finally, you know, he developed his skin and was able to come back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, he's he, he's man. I, I haven't. I was. I gotta find him, man. I haven't seen him in a long time, man. But he was a, definitely an intricate piece to the whole get yours and and like you saw him on the video, right? He was on the staircase in the gas phase video, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well, I actually, I actually used to live across the street from him at one point, and yeah. I remember I used, to, I used to get up every morning and I would go outside and see him stop there practicing martial arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah That's man. a good brother. Good brother. Well, <laughs> what else you got since then? Uh, it's been said that, you know, even back then, early on, before MF Doom, everybody was calling him Doom. Um, that was probably because of his last name. Did you guys foresee the mask at all coming into play earlier on? Uh, or fast forward several years, you guys were... Um, kind of caught off guard with the emergence of MF Doom? Uh, I, I, well, for me, we were, we, when he was still around, he was still around Long Beach when, when, and we were not, you know, we were calling him MF, like he was using the MF Doom name. He was still out in Long Beach. So we knew that that, you know, was coming about. There's some other brothers, that's down with Get Yours that were more, uh, that were closer to him as far as when it was coming up with the concept, like being there, you know, speaking about the concept and everything like that. The mask, you know, they are, certain, you know, like Quest was one of them, you know, who was one of the dancers for KMD. Uh, they were there. So yeah, we, we knew that it was forming, but not, some of us didn't know to what extent. Um, right. I mean, I remember seeing when Operation Doomsday came out. I, I like I didn't know that that I, I knew the album was being done and made, and but I didn't know when it was coming out. And I kind of stumbled upon it. Actually, was at it was so weird because Bob, it, it, that album came out under Bobito's uh, imprint, Fondalum Records. I was working in the city at the time. And I stumbled across Bobito had a little spot, a store. And I remember that you kind of went down a couple of steps and it was a store. It was like a, almost like a boutique, right? And I walked in there and I'm looking, it was all kind of, and Dooms, Operation Doomsday was in there. 
And that's how I was like, oh, wow. Like it came out, cool. Um, Doomsday, is it Doomsday? I'll tell you a quick story about that song. So one day we're all at our friend Diego's house, drinking, hanging out. We're all, you know, having fun. I had KRS-One's uh, cassette that I, I made a copy of KRS-One. Uh, and it had poetry on it, right? So if you listen to poetry, if you remember they had like the scratches and the beat and everything. So me and the fellas are in the kitchen having a debate about the scratches in that song. Because when you listen to it, it goes from one sound into another sound. And we're mm-hmm. debating, did they do that in two takes and piece it together? Or is he scratching the sound, you know, making it himself go from, that one sound to the other. And we're in there debating and debating and Doom the whole time is off to the side, not saying a word, just watching us listening. We're not even, we're really into this debate. Next day or a couple of days later, I see Doom at the train station and he asked me to borrow the tape. Sure, no problem. I give him the cassette. Time goes by, I don't see my tape back and everything. And I'm, you know, and I'm a huge KRS fan. I'm like, where's my tape? I bump into him again at the train station. I'm joking with him, like, yo, where's my, where's my tape bag, man? Where's my K- BDP tape? He's like, yo, E, wait till you hear what I did with, with, the, you know, with the song. Time comes by, he plays me the song, bro, and I hear the scratches that we were debating about in the song, part of the beat, and I was like, this dude, this whole time he was just sitting back and you could tell his mind, right? Because he's there thinking, if these guys are going so hard debating about this, then this is something. You know, this 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 hits hits it, it hits with the fans. So that's how he ended up incorporating that into that song. So when the album came out and I hear that, you know, again, it's one of those things that you can sort of kind of you know be proud of, happy about, you know, that you have that little. Just something so minute like that that we're just taking for granted, having fun talking. He right. just sees a whole nother picture. Were you able to talk to him about that, or was the communication kind of? No, I mean, we like I said, he let he let me listen to it, and as, as well as he did, a, you know, other brothers, as, you know, a lot of us. And mm-hmm. but by the time the album actually came out, it was around the time where you know he was he was hanging out in the city a lot more. You know, we would see him from time to time, but then th- this is like around the time that, that he's sort of making that transition of moving and the communication between a lot of us starts to get a little less. Uh, there were still some of us, you know, there's some brothers that, that to, to up until that he passed away had communication with him and would talk to him from time to time. And a lot of us would just kind of keep up to date through them. You know, but uh, yeah, that, that that was around that time. What about you, Patrick or Drez? Did you guys have any communication uh, with uh, Doom throughout the uh, recent years? No, no, I didn't. Um, I think about probably like a year and a half before he passed. Probably about a year and a half. Um, the most two years because I went to, uh, my last trip to London. Um, before I left, I spoke to him. And then uh, when I got there, we were supposed to meet up. He's supposed to come out of my hotel, but then I tried, to, you know, I tried to reach out to him. I couldn't get him after that. But we spoke right before I left to go to London. Cause he was he was staying out there then at that time. Right. Uh he's left a uh legacy, we can tell by uh, you know, just one year later, uh how much love has poured out. Um, before we uh, jump out of here, can you guys leave us your fondest memory uh, of MF Doom? Um, I, I would say, like, I remember one time I was just walking down the street. Um, you know, he was hanging out with some of his fellas, and uh, he just walked up to me. Like, he used to do it a lot, but this time he's walked up. We took a little walk. And he just kept telling me, like, how great I am. And he's like, yo, you're talented, man. You're going to be great. Like, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm really looking forward to working with you, you know? And I just never forgot those talks. They stuck with me. 
I'll just say real quick for me, as far as Doom himself, um, I want to say was there were two shows that he performed. One was in Central Park, and the other one I can't remember the spot. It was in Manhattan. Uh, the one in Manhattan sticks, stands out the most for me because we haven't we didn't see him for a long time, and we just kind of went to the show. It was a you know a bunch of us from GYP. We get to the show. And it's jam packed. Yeah, you know, Big Daddy Kane performed that night. And I don't remember who else because by that time, <laughs> you know, we were <laughs> drinking at the, you know, a lot of parts were blur in a way, but there were so many people in the crowd and we kind of got separated, right? So there was like two of us here, three of us. By the time we heard that Doom was coming on stage, we were trying to make it now through the crowd to get up to, you know, as close as possible. And somehow within that, all of those people that were there, we all, you know, like it was two of us here, we all ended up in the front stage, all of us together. It's not like that we was, you know, got separated. Somehow we ended up together. Doom's performing, going back and forth and spots us in the crowd. And it's like he first, it's like you could see that he 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 recognized one or two, and then he sees like another, and then he just kind of sees like you know, it's all of us there and he acknowledged us. And he even like in the middle of doing his show, he's like, man, you guys are gonna make me shed a tear. That to me is like one of the most memorable for me because like I said, we had we didn't see him for a while. And the fact that he was so us and acknowledged the way he did, we always knew that the love was always there even though the communication wasn't there. So that's probably one of my, one of, my most fondest memory. I mean, for me, the fondest memory was uh, what I shared with you um, earlier about being in North Carolina and us embracing uh, each other as well as the whole crew. So, you know, Sub Rock, Onyx um, at the time, you know, Ahmed, Otis, they were all on that tour together and um, being able to see each other in a foreign place to us, both. I had just come there. They were, you know, there on, on con during the concert and uh, during the tour. And I think that what I remember about it is there was still a lot of innocence in their eyes and his and, and the rest of the whole crew. Innocence in mine too, because um, we were still there was still some, some growth as young men, but there was still this sort of naiveness too, still there. Um, so I remember that. So I think that physically I, I will probably remember that more because it was the time that we had that conversation about who we were to each other growing up that we never had, a conversation we never had. Um, and spiritually, I think the last time I saw him is that after talking to Drez about trying to do the project, that I remember just talking to him saying, look, I haven't seen you, man, in over 25 years. I remember saying that, like out loud, <laughs> maybe 20, 25 years. Um, and I've made a promise to this brother. And I was talking about Drez at the time, but literally talking to him. Just, I said, think about what you might want me to do. I said, I, I got a feeling about what I want to do and how I want to write this. But I said, I do need some assistance. And I want to, want to sleep. I think probably about three or four days later, came up with the first draft and sent it to Drez. Um, I don't even think the full committee was together yet, Drew. I think it's just you and me at that yeah, point. I don't think so, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's sort of the last time that I actually maybe spiritually had a conversation with him. Um, because at that point, I needed uh, a transference of the energy to do it. Nice. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's really cool. So... Man, what do you think, Sincere? I think we've covered a decent amount of uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Story and backstories. And um, so, you know, once again, I want to thank you guys for joining us, man. Thank you for all the work you've done. Yes, sir. Um, you know, it, it means a lot. You know what I mean? And it means a lot to Long Beach, Long Beach, New York, by the way, because I don't think we've made that. I mean, we said Long Island, but I don't want nobody getting it confused <laughs> with it. Long Beach, California. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, Long Beach is on the map. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the entire Dumoulet family, the committee, everybody else that was involved. Um, you know, shout out to Ahmed, shout out to Otis, Tanji, uh, special shout out to you, Dim. You know what I mean? Special, you know, shout out to you as well. Uh, to the wife, you know, I haven't, me personally, I haven't been able to communicate with her. I wish, you know, hope one day I can, just as you know, send, send my condolences. If you see this, from all of us that get yours and everybody in Long Beach, you know, our condolences to you and the family, you know, as well as your son that passed away. Um, but yeah, you know, thanks to these guys, man, we, you know, it's a, it's another way, another form of doom and KMD sub rock to, to live on. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you, man. Good seeing my family. Good yeah. meeting you, Cecile. Likewise, Patrick. We'll right. stay in touch. You all have a great night, man. And Pat, yeah. we will, you know, I know you got a lot of things going on and you're moving around a lot, so you have our support. If you ever need anything to be plugged or something like that, let us know, man. Feel free. All right, I appreciate that, brother. All right. No doubt. Take care of yourself. All right. All right. Yes, thank you very much, Pete. Thanks, Driz. Yeah, peace. Sincere. All right, peace, Driz. Thanks, man. I'm, I'll text no you. Doubt. No doubt. All right, peace.